Good morning. Welcome to GSC Live Mornings. It's Monday, August 31st, day 171 in this stay safe, stay sane time together. A little later coming in this morning. Uh, enjoyed the early morning uh, thunder showers here in Rochester. It's a beautiful, a little darker morning. Uh, couldn't be outside this morning. <clears throat> Had to remain inside. Excuse me. Um, yeah. Um, it, yesterday was a great day. Beautiful, beautiful weather. Uh, we had a wonderful online worship service as we continue to do. Um, thank you for your participation in that. Um, and then I was blessed to be able to lead a memorial service in the afternoon up at the Orinoco uh, City Park. Some of you were there. It was great to see you. It was a gathering of about 100 to 125 people, uh, remembering the life of David Olson and um, uh, a lot of family members there. Um, and I just want to say it felt great. <clears throat> it felt great to uh, be with a gathering of people outdoors safely. It was a really nice setting. Everybody was wearing their masks and distancing properly. And But the greatest part of it was to be able to share the good news of the gospel openly, freely, uh, to pray together openly and freely in a time uh, that seems uh, more contentious than it needs to be, where I think many of us are afraid to say anything openly and freely. Uh, most recently, the conflicts that we're seeing, uh, the public conflicts we're seeing in places like Portland, um, I don't know about you, but they're very concerning to me. And um, uh, it's a time when uh, uh, I'm afraid to speak openly, uh, even the truth, and um, what I'm called to. And I'll continue to call for the truth and uh, to call for kindness, uh, love, uh, for the sake of God and the humanity that is his. Um, I think you all know uh, my concerns about this. Uh, um, yeah, it's challenging. So I'm going to read to you from John 13, verses 18 and 20. <clears throat> Jesus said, I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But it is to fulfill the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly I tell you, whoever receives one who I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. Hmm. I think we need to ponder that line. I share the sentiments of Barbara Brown Taylor when she said this. The whole purpose of the Bible, it seems to me, is to convince people to set down the written word, the book itself in order to become the living words in the world for God's sake. Can we be the living words of God? I think you know what those living words of God are. And we go right to truth, go right to mercy, go right to justice, um, humility, uh, this right now seems to me to be um, a survival mode to walk those words, to be courageous, uh, to say those things. I'm going to continue on here. Jesus washes the feet of the disciples. He hasn't yet mentioned that one of them will betray him. 
Then he reminds his disciples who he is. Between unity and division, between community and fracture, between commitment and desertion, comes this reminder at just the right time, exactly when we need to hear it. Because we could so easily forget how challenging it is to follow Jesus when we start thinking about only what we want. This is what Jesus does, you know. <clears throat> he interrupts, he intercedes, and inserts himself and his truth in our lives because our tendency is to pass over those places and those truths where, where difficulty in believing God outweighs the promises of God. Following Jesus is not for the faint of heart and does not suffer fools lightly. In the end, Judas' betrayal will not be the handing over of Jesus. Jesus does that on his own in John's Gospel, willingly stepping out of the garden because the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, sheep his own life, and no one will take it from him. Rather, in his betrayal of Jesus, Judas rejects the relationship Jesus offers with himself, with God, and with the community committed to witnessing that Jesus is the Word made flesh. How do we respond to the challenging invitation to follow Jesus? I want to read that one line again. Judas in his betrayal, rejects the relationship Jesus offers with himself and with God and with the community that is committed to witnessing that Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus, the Word made flesh. It's a big concept, but it's our concept. <clears throat> to be the living Word of God in our time and place truth and justice, concern for humanity, peace. Blessings to you, my friends. Let's close with this short prayer. Jesus, please continue to show up and say, I am, especially when we need to hear it the most. Amen. Blessings to you, folks. Be the living word of God.